great Kali stayed there. And shall we say he did not have the greatest um, hygiene or interpersonal skills when it came. He would like leave raw chicken out in his room. He would pee in the shower. Like, and I don't mean like he'd take a shower and pee. He would like walk into the shower, just take a piss and walk away. A lot of stuff. But I think I'm one of the like three gaijin still working that have a victory over Masawa. I think it's like me. That's all the credit. Yeah, I think it's like me, Claudio, and uh, Hero. I think I might be mistaken on that, but I think the three of us technically have wins over him. Saint, he was very polite. I got to see Al Snow looking like he wanted to blow his brains out, which I was really awkward. It was just the whole show. He's just. Oh yeah, I can imagine Al Snow at a Chikara show. <laughs> I know every everything he's against yes. just in tenfold, and it, it was just it was pretty funny. That's awesome. um, and then but, as we're, I start to notice that like. All the agents are around. Like I'm starting noticing, it's like Finley's out there, uh, Rotundo, Arn. They're just all around ring. So I'm like, huh, this is unusual. I uh, we get in the ring, we do the whole, we do the whole deal. We're wrestling around, we're doing the shtick. Um, I'm putting, or uh, Woods is putting heat on me. He puts me down in a hold, and he just goes, "Okay, you've taken care of me. You've been real good in here. Hit me as hard as you can on your comeback." I'm, I'm just down there. I'm like, "You sure?" He goes. Yes, hit me as hard as you can. So I run the comeback and I'm blasting him with everything. And I, I found out later they asked him, like, oh, those shots look pretty stiff. How was he? He goes, oh, light as feather, didn't even touch me. So he, he actually had a pretty big role in getting me a job. Um, so we go through the whole thing um, and I realized part with the match, Triple H should actually come down to watch the match. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Were you feeling pressure at this time? You see, back in my day, we didn't have no, we didn't have no uh, mirror like y'all got. We had the, I got the, I got the rear view mirror in my car. So I'm driving down the highway. Johnny Cash, Ring of Fire playing on my stereo, on my eight track. I'm looking in the mirror, I'm cutting promos, I'm drinking beers. I'm doing this for hours. I fall asleep at the wheel. I wake up, I spin out, I wind up <laughs> in, a, in a damn cotton field. There's people out there, they're picking cotton that morning. So here's what I do. Car comes to a stop. Open the door, beer cans fall out everywhere. I get out, afro out to here, shirt open. Get up on the hood of my car. Y'all ain't never gonna forget the day. You like, let's show you trying to win. Let's show you're athletic. Let's do something along those lines. We get to the back after the match. Terry goes. First of all, I want to say this with uh, all the Christian love and fairness in my heart. That was terrible. Which is almost always the way Terry starts things. He'll always say that phrase, and then he'll just tell you, he'll just bury you. So um, he goes, you just told the whole audience he can't pin you. I'm like, what? What? He's like, you pin him three times. He kicked out all three times. You can't pin him. And the way he's phrasing it, you would swear the audience was like, with a bingo yeah. card, like, okay, one kick out, two kick outs. <laughs> uh, oh, he can't beat him. Can't beat, no, look, three kick outs, he can't beat him. First of all, NXT, coming from FCW, the guys who came from FCW, were all very, very paranoid. FCW was kind of a minefield. It was a real, like a lot of guys got mind fucked there super bad. Like it was, all the stories I heard were awful. Not necessarily about what physically happened to anyone, but as much right. as like being told every day, you're gonna get fired, you're gonna get fired, you're gonna get fired. And that can wear on people. Probably so about six or eight months before it wound up happening. The first time I heard it was from Dusty in November. He said Triple H wanted to see us as a team, and I heard it again from him a few months later, and I think the third time I heard it was when I got told we were actually going to be a team. We're at catering. It's me, Jorge. So it's like me and Jorge are sitting opposite sides of the table. Right. Uh, between us, so Kalisto's next to him, and then uh, Uha, Apollo Cruz is next to me. And it was funny because Bray Wyatt kept saying, don't fuck with, the, don't fucking, don't, don't do this. Don't play with Jorge. Don't play with him. Jorge. He, don't play with him. He was like telling me, don't play with this motherfucker. He's... Coke and I can't figure I'm like trying to put together what's going on because I'm smelling the Diet Coke my face hurts I'm like oh, I can't, what the fuck did is that Diet Coke did someone hit me in the face with a can why is Jorge running at me this is, this is going to be an exclusive because I don't think this photo has been anywhere there you go I am uh, prepping it though I'm going to be doing happened. a uh, this is before I've been stitched up oh damn yeah so I sent that I had to oh. send that photo to my brother and my mom and some people be like I'm okay he's that guy who's I'm gonna put the, him and Cena are like the polar opposites and that they're both those guys that have been there for a long time but Randy's that I don't give a fuck guy. Yeah. Whereas Cena's that uh, I love this company guy. Both great guys, but Randy's the guy who'll be like, oh, that's fucking bullshit. Oh, that guy's a fucking mark. Fuck him. But he, he's mostly just doing it to get the pop, but it's like he, he, doesn't, he doesn't have that filter of, of 
shall we say, good company etiquette. But that's right. part of what's so. That's what part of why you gotta love the guy. You mentioned John Cena. Was John Cena one of the boys, or was he? Uh... Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. He actually was part of the reason I got a job as well. He. He happened to be at the tryout, and he I guess he popped huge for my promo, so he was, he was always very supportive. Uh, him and Nikki are fucking cool. Uh, Thank you. If I had been signed in 2012, like Arn Anderson that day when I did the tryout match had said, if, I, if it was up to me, you'd be on TV tonight. I'd have you be, I don't know, I'd have you be Santino's cousin. I don't know. I'd better to put you out there tonight. I think if they'd signed me right then and there, I would have been fine. I think if when I'd gotten to NXT, I'd gone right to TV, I would have been fine. I think by the time we actually did anything, the luster of the new toy had worn off so much that I was just another guy in the system. And what had happened was, and, and that's by the time we debuted, was it was kind of like we weren't the new toy anymore. Because if you take a look at how we, we went, we're in NXT. We debuted, um, right, I think shortly after WrestleMania in uh, WrestleMania 30, I think it was. We had a little bit of a run on TV where we were going good. The audience really liked us, they were cheering us. Um, and we're going to this is an example of what I mean with well intentioned but bad advice. Because he tells us that, like, okay, well, the audience is cheering us. That seems like we're baby faces. Right. We have kind of a happy, peppy, upbeat gimmick. Um, we're baby faces. All what right, did cool. you view yourself as? Baby face. Yeah, that, that was 100%. Because it seemed like the, char- the characters, English had been a heel, but I felt like the heel character kind of died when Cass beat him after their whole feud. Like, we need a team to fill this spot. We got the tag titles more or less because they wanted to put them on Dawson Wilder, and they didn't want to do a heel to heel transfer. Transition champion. Yeah, that was the whole. Re- I mean, even you look at the way it happened. Like I said, we did that thing with uh, Lucha Dragons. Um, and to, to give you the the full rundown on Enzo, he's he is every, well. First, I will say to his credit, he absolutely believes his own bullshit. He is one hundred percent confident in himself, to his detriment, and to the detriment of others around him. Um, he's an example of someone who has no excuse to not no wrestling but he doesn't know wrestling to give you just a full rundown of just a few of these these are the highlights yeah definitely go for here's it. some Enzo highlights we'll start with this one Enzo is from New Jersey the fuck right so I tell this story Enzo who claims to be the hugest Dusty Rhodes fan in the world Dusty's oh bro Dust, Dusty's my he's my mentor all, all this stuff oh man I can't believe Kalisco would do that you could have heard a pin drop everyone just does the Raging Bull, Manny Fernandez, Dusty's tag partner, you know, the guy you supposedly is your mentor. Oh, because Kalisto's name is Manny, is uh, Manny Rodriguez. And Enzo's the type of guy that would try to play that off like it was a joke and he knew. Right. Finally on but the apron. If I do, come to me. I'm going to give you the fucking the hangman. If I miss the apron for any reason, just so you know, because I knew he wasn't very good. If I land on the floor, come after me. I'll grab your feet, trip you, and I'll just spin you around and start glomming you. Which is it going to be? Like, I don't know. I'm going to try and land on the apron. I'm telling you I might miss. There's a possibility of that. I've missed the apron before going out. I'm trying to warn you of this so you know if that happens what to do. Well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'm like, I finally get He uh, broke his own leg trying to counter a wrist lock. I didn't even know that. Yeah, that, that when he was in the wheelchair on NXT TV, that's how it happened. He broke his own leg trying to counter a wrist lock. He blamed it on the canvas being loose done it before and rather than just being an adult and saying I've never done that before or I don't think I can do that he lied injures himself and then I get shit on for it which would actually want to become a theme in, in my career with him well I was going to ask you for the pay-per-view your debut at Payback you guys faced them and that was the match that was stopped because he got the uh, you know legit concussion mm-hmm. did you get a lot of heat for that never directly I don't know like I, said, I don't know if there ever was any um, I think most people knew that Enzo was kind of a clod in the ring uh, if you if you see famously the uh, the the uh, Claudio match he had recently where he tried to go out of the ring my favorite part was I found out he thought there was nothing wrong with it he was like, oh it was fine he was trying to skin the cat too yeah which I guarantee you same thing they told, he said can you skin the cat oh yeah bro I can skin the cat no problem and sure enough he can't but uh, a lot of people have been so he's almost touching the ropes about a quarter of the way off because obviously I don't want it to be too close so Cass could tag him I go I start running with him I'm ghosting him the whole way my hands are here here just holding him Running, running, running. He starts to slide. Boom, hits. I do the big follow through. Yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. I go out of the ring. I look at him. I'm like, man, he's selling the shit out of this. Cool. I go to grab him. I'm a light touch with stuff with grabbing. I'm very, because I, I know how much that sucks when someone grabs you and just fucking. So literally, fingers on, four, fingers on temples, you know, side of the head. Comes with me. 
I'm like, okay, he's good. Rudy Charles, referee, we're in replays. So I let go of him, turn around, start jaw jacking with the crowd. I turn back around, I see this. I see the X, and I go, oh, fuck. He's out. So, watching it back, near as I can tell, one of two things happened. Or rather, two things happened sort of congruently. Like, well, they wanted us to be heels. They felt like we weren't getting enough heat. We're going to get fucking heat for this. And the immediate thing we do is the next night we job out the cast on Raw. Yeah. I think we did like three times in a row, too. Like, we did like Raw, Main Event, and SmackDown. I might be mistaken, but I think we did like three times within a couple weeks. We're in there, or we're, we're calling the match, and it just keeps going and going and going. And I'm sitting there next to Fit, and I just go, okay, we're now seven minutes into our eight minute match. 12 minutes into our eight minute match. 74 minutes into our eight minute match. Like I just, and he just, he's chuckling because he, he gets it. It's the whole, you guys are calling so much for an eight minute match. Like we're, if, we, if we can cram it all in. And New Day, for their, for their part, they actually wanted to cut their promo short because they're like, let's get a little bit more match time. You know, let's, we, we're going to have eight minutes. Let's, get, let's at least get, uh, you know, where it was going to be a feud between us and Breeze Dango. The one thing that, that William Regal had always wanted me in English to have that we never got was a monkey. He wanted us to have a monkey. He thought it would be great if we had a I could see that. Just a pet was... monkey. Right. And I came up with one step better, and I thought of the idea that we should or have. we can, you know, we'll just look like fucking circus freaks with shaved heads. And he seemed to like it. He was like, I, you know, I had my head shaved once, and I, uh, I probably have the worst looking skull in, the, in human history. I'm like, well, I'll, I'll definitely be a runner up then. <laughs> and he, he seemed to be on board with it. All the writers seemed to like it. And I'm like, okay, maybe we got something going. But, and it, they even said, it's the perfect time to pitch it. It's right before WrestleMania. We're looking for angles to do as soon as TV picks up right after it. And that is not what happened. <laughs> How did you find out about your release? So um, it was Tuesday. Uh, we just, we'd read, or it was uh, Wednesday, I'm sorry. Tuesday, we'd, uh, we had Monday off. Uh, Tuesday, we came and we did TV in Orlando. We wrestled Jordan and Gable in a dark. It was erroneously reported that English was uh, the one who took the pinfall when I was, which speaks to, once again, my, my, my point of earlier about they can't tell us apart when we look so different, which is really weird. 